Welcome to OK Hobby Time, my name is Adam. In this video, I'm building an elemental mineshaft entirely out of foam. This is going to be an epic centerpiece for my tabletop wargames and RPGs. I'm starting off by creating the hill section that the mineshaft sits on top. I'll be using different layers of foam to create the stepped hill that will look like stratified rock once finished. Each piece is roughly drawn out then cut out using a combination of a utility knife and a hot wire cutter. I'm using the cutout hill to trace out the dimensions of the next hill. I'll continue doing this until I have four different foam hills that can be stacked. Next, I'm going to be using my favorite technique to make the foam look like rock. First, I score the piece a few times horizontally, all the way across the rock face. Then, I use my knife to score the foam vertically. I drag the edge of a metal ruler across the scored foam, taking out small chunks and leaving behind a surface that resembles rock. As a finishing touch, I use my knife to create some texture. I do this by sticking the blade in horizontally, then flicking it upwards. This technique is a simple way to get a convincing rock face. And when it's used with stacked pieces of foam, it resembles a stratified rock formation. All the pieces are glued together using quick dry wood glue. I'll be using this glue throughout the build as it's my preferred way of sticking foam together. I bring out the hot wire table to begin cutting down all my structural pieces. This includes all my wood beams and thinner planks that will be placed on top. I'll be using a handheld hot wire cutter to give the foam a wood grain texture. I do this by dragging the tip of the cutter across the piece at a low temperature. The mineshaft is going to have a couple watchtowers surrounding it. I begin on the floors which are framed like a real wooden structure to give the foam a bunch of durability. I'm leaving gaps between the planks and gluing them down crooked to make the structure look even more like wood. I find that using real framing techniques helps foam look more like wood. Beams are glued into the corners of the floor. And afterwards, the structure is put into place. The towers are built to hang off the mountain to give the build some extra visual interest. The next levels of the towers are built in a similar way. I'm taking my time to make sure everything is nice and straight. This is where the extra working time of the wood glue comes in handy. I'm using a large wooden beam in the back tower to connect the floor since there's an opening for a ladder. I'm keeping in mind the overall composition of the towers so there's a nice balance when finished. While waiting for the build to dry, I put together a few ladders using thin pieces of foam. These are going to be used to access the higher floors of the towers. Railings are put into place to give miniatures some cover. I'm using a test model to make sure they're placed at the right height. These railings have another function. They act as supports for the vertical beams and give the structure more durability. Some sides are left open and have a crosswalk that connects the two towers. The tops of both towers are given a fence as well to match what was done on the floors below. In my mind these towers were built to defend this important location. I can already see battles taking place by warring factions, trying to secure this valuable mineshaft for themselves.
A build like this is a great centerpiece for a table, and I'm already thinking of ways of expanding this theme into smaller scatter pieces. The next part of this build is going to be a treadmill crane that sits on top of one of the platforms. I'm using a circle jig on my hot wire table to make the frames of the treadmill. I've always wanted to make a medieval crane and thought this would be a perfect opportunity for one. Medieval cranes are quite interesting. The idea was to have a giant hamster wheel that a human could be in. This wheel was connected to the axle with the rope. The large wheel would provide enough leverage to move heavy objects. While doing research, I learned that it was common to get blind people to be within the wheel, since they would often be set up precariously, many stories off the ground. And this massive drop was not a sight most people would be comfortable with. I find builds like this to be a fun way to test my crafting skills, since quite a bit of accuracy is required for something like this to come together properly. While everything is drying, I put together a little crate for the crane to hold. I'm marking off this section for the mineshaft, making sure it's at least big enough to fit my crate. A hot wire cutter is used to cut through the foam and create the mineshaft. Even though I wanted to maintain a base, I ended up going all the way through since it was easier. I knew it'd be simple to patch up the bottom with a piece of foam afterwards. I measure out a piece of string and attach it to the crane. A bent paper clip is used at the end of the string as a hook. The next part is to create the giant crystal clusters that are coming out of the ground. I start by cutting out a bunch of rectangles in varying thickness. I'm then taking these rectangles and cutting them lengthways on their corners, creating a rough octagonal shape. The tips of these shapes are then pointed to create the final crystal. I'm making sure to vary the shapes and cuts of the crystals, since these are organic forms and shouldn't be identical to each other. I'm keeping composition in mind for these clusters as well, putting the larger crystals in the back and then the shorter ones in the front. This way nothing becomes obscured. At this point the building portion is complete. I always enjoy seeing builds in this stage. A structure made entirely out of foam. It's time to paint this build. I'm starting with the base coats of the wood structures, where I'll be mixing Mod Podge into my black paint for some extra durability. This isn't something I usually do, but since the pieces used here are a bit thinner, it didn't hurt to be extra cautious. Before base coating the hills, I want to add some texture. PVA glue is applied to the tops of all the hill sections and afterwards covered in a mixture of coarse and fine sand. Once dried, the hill section is painted in a dark brown. This is going to be the undertone of the rock and grass sections. A greenish gray is then overbrushed on the rock face. It's not a full coverage since I want some brown to show through in the deepest recesses. When painting hills, I do my best to incorporate colors other than gray. The brown and green undertones help make this train piece look much more interesting. Next, all the wood pieces are given a heavy overbrush of brown.
A lighter gray is then dry brushed over top, picking out the highest details and giving the rock face some contrast. Afterwards, I dry brush the wood sections as well, picking out the raised textures and focusing on the edges. The same color and techniques are being used on the smaller pieces, such as the crane. The coarse sand is given a quick dry brush of grey, making the larger pieces look like stones. Next are the crystals. I begin by base coating the foam in black. I then bring out my airbrush to give the crystals a specular highlight. This is done for each of the facets. The color of my crystals are made from combining two GW contrast paints, Achillean Green and Plague Bearer's Flesh, diluted with airbrush thinner. The transparency of this mixture allows for the shadows and highlights to show through. PVA glue is applied again. This time it's going to be used for the grass flock. I start by sticking down some coarser foliage in the sections where the pieces meet. Finer flock is then applied to the tops of all the hills. I'm using a combination of green and yellowish flock for a more varied look. Hanging foliage is added throughout the build to give it an overgrown look. This helps break up the brown and add some nice contrast. Finally, the remaining pieces are put in place. And that wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future hobby content. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.